Grip socks are great, and now they're even better with Pure Grip Socks Pro. Better fit, moisture wicking, amazing comfort, and all the extra grip you need. Choose from 10 different colors for just $16.99 a pair at puregripsocks.com. So, you want to jump on the Neymar boot bandwagon, but you're also on a budget. Well, Puma has you covered with this football boot right here, the Puma Future Z 2.2, the first takedown model in the Future Z lineup, bearing a retail price of $130, which is $70 less expensive than the top end model that Neymar actually wears. And I'm just kidding about the Neymar bandwagon stuff. The Future Z is an excellent pair of football boots, regardless of who Puma pays to wear them. But the question is, is the more budget-friendly option actually worth it? Because at $130, it's less expensive than some mid-tier takedown models on offer from their main competitors in Nike and Adidas, but they're still not inexpensive. And for those that saw my review on the Ultra 2.3, those are phenomenal value for money, arguably the best on the market. Do these even come close? That's exactly what I want to talk about in today's video as we go over all the details, including how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire review. And if you are interested in a pair for yourself, you can pick these up below their normal retail price by way of some exclusive SR4U coupon codes by checking out the first link down below. As always, if you guys do end up enjoying the video and want to continue seeing more reviews of takedown models on the channel, please don't forget to support this one with a like and let me know what you'd like to see reviewed next down below in the comment section. Also guys, we have a goal of 750,000 subscribers by the end of the year. For those of you guys that are not subscribed to the channel but regularly watch the content, it'd mean the world to me if you could hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. As for the technical side of things, it seems to be a bit of a trend amongst the big brands recently to not tell us consumers what exactly they've done with their takedown models. A lot of it is left up to our own interpretation and I'm going to do my best to break down exactly what's going on here. But based on what I can tell, there are three main elements that remain the same when compared to the top end Future Z 1.2, and that is the lacing system, the stud pattern, and to a lesser extent, the texturing on the surface of the upper that I would actually argue is a little bit more significant on the 2.2 than it is on the top end model. Everything else about these boots is pretty well different. But that's not to say that these are a significant step down. I think the most significant element that they've changed is the upper, which is not a mesh or knit based synthetic material. Instead, it's actually a plastic based synthetic material with a padded inner liner. The funny part about this is while that might seem like a significant change from the top end model with its knitted construction, when you have one of these boots on your left foot and the top end Future Z 1.2 on your right foot, it's almost impossible to tell a difference between the two when it comes to overall feel for the ball. The upper is a little bit more slick on the 2.2, there's just more grip from that top end model because of the grip control coating that they have on there, which this one also technically has. We'll get to that in just a second. But overall, this is a football boot that does not feel like a cheaper takedown model when it comes to touch. Despite using different materials, it is very similar to the top end option, which is a good thing. The top layer of material is a little bit on the slick side with the finish that they've gone for. That may vary from colorway to colorway, but on this launch blue one, it's not particularly grippy. And you will of course find the micro texturing in that new pattern that's also on the top end boot. And I think because this is a synthetic upper, that texturing itself does seem to be a little bit more, I guess, significant. It seems to be slightly more raised and you notice it more to the touch, but notice it a lot less on the ball. In general, it's slightly more slick than the top end model, but not by much, which is interesting because this also utilizes Grip Control Pro, which is basically Puma's version of ACC. It's supposed to add kind of like a sticky top layer to the upper, and you simply do not feel that with the Future Z 2.2. So why it says Grip Control Pro, I'm not entirely sure. Which brings us to what is easily the most distinctive element of the top end Future Z, and that is the Fusion Fit Plus Band, which the Future 2.2 does not have. This is instead 
the Fusion Fit Band. So they've taken away the Plus, but maintained the same overall construction based on what I can tell. It seems to be the same amount of tension as well as the same amount of material. And you can see on the lateral side, it flows from the bottom of the sole plate up the side of the upper across the top of the foot. And then you'll notice cuts off right here on the medial side where they continue the pattern with these admittedly kind of cheap looking lines that don't line up with the white lines on the actual Fusion Fit band. What you're gonna find here is that this band actually ends right about here and then that portion at the lower part of your midfoot is actually just filled in with the same synthetic material as the rest of the upper. So it's quite a bit of a different construction when compared to the top end model. And ultimately what ends up happening here is that you just don't notice the Fusion Fit band nearly as much as you do on the top end Future Z. This basically just ends up fitting like a normal pair of football boots, which you might actually prefer if you're just not crazy about that kind of broken up three piece upper that you have on the top end model. What I love about the Fusion Fit Plus band on the top end boot is that it allows the midfoot to kind of adjust instantaneously to your foot because of that band wrapping the entire midfoot. This just doesn't have that same feel but ultimately does not feel bad either. And because of the unique lacing setup that is kind of exclusive to the Future Z lineup, you still end up with less tightness and I guess tension through the midfoot, which depending on your specific foot type, especially if you're somebody with lower arches, you might find this to be significantly more comfortable. Nonetheless, with the laces tied tight, the boots feel very secure and locked in, which is ultimately what you're looking for. Just don't expect the same general, I guess, unique fit that you get with the top end model on the 2.2. Speaking of fit, the heel is not my favorite. You'll notice that it's distinctly lower in terms of its overall cut when compared to the top end model. And that is mostly just them not extending this knitted material along the outside edge of the low cut collar, if you will. But the quality of the knit on a takedown model is really impressive. Same thing goes for the Ultra 2.3. Nonetheless, the construction of the heel does feature an internal plastic heel counter, but for whatever reason, the shape of it, it's very shallow, or at least shallower than what you'll find on the top end model. I don't think it's to the same extent as some of the Adidas takedown models where I always complain about the depth of the heel, but it was something that was immediately noticeable when I put these on my feet, especially when you have them side by side with the top end boot. It's something that you can get used to. I don't think that it's a deal breaker overall, but it's something that I wish was a little bit better on this particular football boot or at least something that I would change. And then as far as an internal liner is concerned, it is different from the top end model once again, where you have a decent amount of padding, but it's lined in this smooth synthetic material. It's not the suede, which I don't think grips your socks quite as nicely, but ultimately it still feels fine and does a decent job of securing your heel in place once you've tied the laces tight. And then as far as the insole is concerned, that is fully removable and it's extremely straightforward in terms of featuring the soft padded liner on top rather than the more silicone type coated one you get on the top end model. And then it's made from a single layer of red foam with perforated foam inserts through the heel as well as the forefoot. Moving to the base of the boot, you're going to find what is still branded as their dynamic motion system, which refers to the sole plate that has this kind of Z-shaped to it. And you'll find that it doesn't have the same deep cutouts as what you'll have on the top end model. And the material used does appear to be pretty similar, but for whatever reason, this sole plate doesn't flex quite as nicely. The flex point is further back than what you'll find in the forefoot on the top end model. But this is a very subtle difference that I don't think most people are even gonna notice. For the most part, it does feel pretty similar to what you'll find on the top end model. And that's also due to the fact that this more or less features the exact same stud pattern as well, which kind of has these half circle shaped studs. It's a hybrid of a blade and a conical stud that does provide really good bite when pushing off, that freedom to twist and pivot, and is also technically labeled as FGAG. I think this is more AG friendly than what you'll find from the Puma Ultra line, which also has an FGAG stud pattern. But in general, I think this is a stud pattern that is best suited for use on natural grass. Which brings us to the weight, where I think you would expect at $130 for the boots to be relatively lightweight, but given the different materials that they've used for the upper, Who's to say if they're lighter or heavier? We're gonna find that out right now on a scale. This pair being a size 9.5 US, and you can see that they weigh in at nine ounces, exactly the equivalent of 255 grams, which is by no means heavy, but it's more than an ounce heavier than what you'll find from the top NZ 1.2. Is this a noticeable amount of weight? 
I would say yes it is and in general at nine ounces while I don't think these are necessarily going to weigh you down they don't have the same lightweight feel as a lot of other modern day football boots certainly at the $130 price point. So here they are on feet paired up with some red pure grip socks pro which for those that don't know is my own brand of grip socks this new pro variation features an upgraded material that's super soft super stretchy and of course you still get the grips along the bottom of the foot and the back of the heel to reduce slippage inside your boots. They're available now in a wide variety of colors for just $16.99 a pair. So if you're interested in trying some out for yourself, the website to visit is puregripsocks.com, which of course will be linked down below. As for the fit and feel of the Future Z 2.2, it must be said that this does not have that distinctive, unique feel that the top end model has. And I think that is largely due to the fact that this has somewhat of a fusion fit band but it's not fusion fit plus which means that it just ends up feeling more normal on your feet which is not necessarily a bad thing but it does lack the one element of the top end future z that makes that boot fit and feel so unique not to say that they're uncomfortable because that's absolutely not the case like i said despite having a mostly synthetic upper the padded liner really does make it feel pretty similar on feet to that of the knit base material that you have on the top end boot to me one of the more distinctive differences again is also the cut in the heel where these do seem to be a little bit lower in terms of overall depth where it's not that your heel is going to slide out, but I just wish that they were that little bit deeper for the sake of comfort and honestly just feeling a little bit more contoured to the back of your heel. But that's something that will bother some people more than others. As far as width is concerned, these definitely have some decent width to them. And because the Fusion Fit band through the midfoot is not quite the same, in general, I don't think this is as wide as the top NZ, but it still is wide enough to be suitable for most people as long as you don't have excessively wide feet. And then as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US. And similar to the top end Future Z, they run about a quarter size long. I personally wouldn't be able to go down half a size, but just realize that when you do order them, they are gonna have that little bit of extra space. So if you have extra space in your boots already, maybe going down half a size is the way to go. But for most people, stick with your normal size and you should get the right fit. So in conclusion, should you buy the Puma Future Z 2.2? And my answer to that is, I don't think you shouldn't, but I don't necessarily think you should either. And my reasoning behind that is that when I compare this boot to the Ultra 2.3, which is their other $130 takedown model, I just think that is a significantly better football boot in just about every way. It's pretty much a top end model that retails for half the price of what a top end model would normally go for. And that's not to say that these are bad in any way at all. I think these do offer decent value for money considering other options that you have at this price point. But you also have to consider that the Future Z 1.1 wasn't a particularly hot seller and you can find those older models in older colorways top end boots discounted to $130 or less so my recommendation is if you really want a pair of future z's given how similar the 1.2 is to the 1.1 save the money buy the older model and skip the takedown model it's a solid pair of football boots and if you have the opportunity to try them on you're getting a good deal on them and you really like the way they feel i think you're going to be pretty happy with them but in general I'm not blown away by what Puma have done with these. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair for yourself, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.